outfits today are indicative of our feelings. I feel like we at war with our team. And look at Gwen's shirt. Washington football God. team. I God. So I have a lot to say. I even took notes because <laughs> I don't want to miss nothing. Um, my issues, let me just start here. My issues with Ron Rivera started a while ago, but for me, they were solidified. If you think back now, everybody think back, especially if you were an NFC East person or a commander's person, think back to last season when we were on a winning streak. The team was going in a direction you have never seen before. Who was that quarterback, Gwen? Who was our quarterback? Think back, Hanukkah. Exactly. All that we needed to do was beat the Cleveland Browns the following week and we would be in the playoffs. There was no mathematical chance we could be kicked out if we just beat the Browns. What did Ron Rivera do? He sat Heineke down and put in who? Carson Wentz. What did he go in there and do? He stunk it up and we lost the game and we didn't make the playoffs. Th there was no explanation for that other than I just thought he gave us the best chance to win. How does he give you the best chance to win when he's been on the bench for weeks and Heineke is the one that brought your team back? There's no explanation for that. That, for me, started my pure disdain for Ron Rivera's coaching style. Yes, he's a nice man. We talk about coaching. The way that he coaches this team, I watched him in the post-game interview after we beat, I mean, after we lost to the Giants this week, yesterday. And I said to myself, he was just like, you know, we just got to go back and look at the tape and, you know, we just got to do our jobs. Very nonchalant. I feel like the team takes on the character and the personality of their leader. He's in them interviews, his body language, the way that he speaks, everything is flat. Everything is just like, oh, well, no sense of urgency. It's time for him to go. I'm going to jump in with both feet. Now, you know, I'm going straight at it. It's the perfect storm of incompetence. I'm sorry. <laughs> Not my fault that he's a rookie, but he adds to it. And that line, how many times in the, from the sixth show that we done done this year, we don't always spoke on the OL. That's just that. That secondary, no. I'm glad we didn't make end of the year predictions because – I kind of knew we were not going to be in the running because of those two things. The O L, sorry, three things: the O L, our quarterback, and that secondary. And it's just a perfect storm of confidence. I'm sorry. Now, nobody, you can't all put it on how, but let's just let's just go this that this last game. Listen, twenty-two of forty-two. Ah, uh, maybe a two hundred and some yards. How many touchdowns did he score, Sabrina? None, because Rob is ran the ball. Correct. Right. But he had an interception, which makes his QBR abysmal 20.4. But they go. But Gwen, this man has been sacked 40 times this year already. In seven games, do the math. He is the most sacked quarterback in the league by a nice little bit. Who get can do point. their job? My quarterback rating would be 20 point something if, 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 if I got in there and they were chasing me like that, that line can't hold water. They can't hold nothing. And it's him holding that ball and being indecisive. Okay. It's, it's a perfect storm. It's all of them. It's the secondary. Can't cover, you know, passes. The linebacker suck. You call that out. They're they not blocking. Maybe they put a big-ass subway sandwich or something down in there and say, back them up this far to get this man. Something needs to happen. And mm -hmm. my issue is this. This has been an issue for four years. They haven't made any adjustments to cover these holes and gaps in our game plan. They haven't made any. They haven't even went out to trade for somebody. They haven't fined them. They haven't offered them incentives. Any Do something. Mm -hmm. you, so you just, well, uh, we got to do better next time. Better next time is to have your ass somewhere else. Cause I am going to start the I'm going to start the petition. Riverboat Ron needs to go gamble somewhere else. I'm done with him. Yeah. I was done with him last year when he sat six back down. But I thought with all the changes mm -hmm. they were they did and they brought EB in and now Sabrina was like, well they can't do it now because new ownership just took over. Okay, we got a year in the hole and mm -hmm. they even coming out to EB too, basically saying. That's why he was overlooked for 15 jobs last year because 
they had him in the running to go to 15 in, um, NFL teams. And they was basically saying that's how he was overlooked two years ago mm -hmm. for the positions because this is not what he does. But he doesn't have a Patrick Mahomes. I mean, he doesn't have good OLs working in, in, in here. And so many people are calling for Ron to be fired, which I think is valid. Some people are saying Jack Del Rio, but some people are already saying EB. I don't think the EB is fair to me. No, it's because not. Because he's only been here, what, seven games? You have to I'm sorry. This has been going on for, since we've been here. EB ain't even been here a whole year. The same grace y'all want me to get high, give it to my boy. Give it to EB. And the same grace Rivera has had for how many years he's been here, five, six, whatever it is. Y'all trying to get rid of EB in six, six, seven games? I mean, come on. You know what I'm saying? Ron Rivera's win percentage since he's been here is 42%. He doesn't even have 500 even win percentage. How you going uh, uh, just now getting to, to fire him, but EB just got here? You, you got to be fair with that. You got to give it time. But that O-line is atrocious. It's abysmal. We've been saying it for two years on this show. If you go back and watch, I don't even know which show it is. All of them. It's, it needs to be addressed. And they don't I'll try to do anything about it. And also, this is what I want to say. So we're getting rid of him. A little bit of the of the grace came because he got sick. And mm -hmm. we all acknowledge that he's a survivor. But okay, but grace, okay, we good. He his tenure is up. We yeah. need to accept it as it is. Mm -hmm. And we go on. So I hope they are at least planning. Need to be a clean straight. Now the only the two I would say is the offensive coach and the defense coach. Everybody else got a reset for me. I'm so sorry. you're saying that you want like you think Del Rio should stay? He all right? Yeah, Del Rio should get another shot because if they're not getting him the praise that he needs, how is he supposed to perform and do a good job? And ultimately, <laughs> it's, but I, Sabrina, I could be wrong. But is it his job to recruit, or who does? Who who has the last final say with these picks and these draft picks? Especially, come on, Sabrina, where have we ever attacked that draft and used it what it's for? That's like playing space with the kitty. That's why the kitty is not allowed. You cannot stack it. We have never used the draft to our advantage since the last good pick was maybe Sean, and I'll even go back to say Robert if we would have handled him differently. Then we got McCarr when they added Haskins. I was like, okay, I see they trying to do better, but that fell through, but we got 50% out of those two, but we haven't really taken advantage of the draft like we're supposed, especially drafting those positions that we truly need. I mean, and, and here's, you asked a question a few seconds ago, and you're like, whose responsibility is it? Because he don't have the, the pieces that he need on defense. I feel like, yes, we still hit, need pieces on defense, but I feel like we have too much talent on defense to be in the bottom five of the league like we are right now. We have too yeah. much talent for that, which when, means... When you get past them front four, the talent goes to zero. Okay, well... All of that on them. They can't be cover guys and safeties and linebackers. For yeah. the most part, they do their job. Sabrina, they held them to 14 points. And that's, that's doable. That's my point. If you hold any team to 14 points, you ought to be able to get 15 or 17, because usually it's 14, 17. You something get like. out there and hit four field goals to get you almost there. And speaking of field goals, let's go there. So we struggled the whole game. We were one for 13, something like that on third down. Struggled the whole game. We finally get into the red zone. It's 14 to seven. The momentum is on our side. Even though we're losing, we get in the red zone. It's fourth down. He had already gone for it, Ron Rivera, fourth down earlier in the quarter. Now it comes to here. We in the red zone. We finally get where we've been struggling to get for all the whole game. What does he do? He sends Joey Sly in there, who misses a 27-yard field goal. It was blocked. Well, who cares? Kick it kick it higher. Do your job. Why did you not go for it on fourth downs? Again, to me, that's not Shalance. Go for it. You missed a riverboat. Why are we – what's the problem? What's the problem? They were one for 15 on third now. Oh, it was 15? That's even yeah. worse. It's even worse. And I'm in total agreement. I can't say enough. I totally agree with you, Sabrina. Sure. And another thing, I'm on a roll. I told you I got a list. It just came back. Another thing just came to me. EB, I'm rooting for him. How Tyra say we was all rooting for you. I was, I'm rooting for him, but I feel like he's not 
calling plays with, for the personnel he has. I think he's calling plays for the personnel that's in his mind, how he wants it to be. If you know your nine stinks and you know you have a rookie quarterback, what do you do? You, you, you bring extra help or you roll him out or you do something to protect him. Don't let that man keep sitting there getting pummeled. Yes, part of it is on him. I get it. But do something to help him. Call the proper plays. Don't keep arrogantly pushing what you want to do. Serena, one play, they had seven people to block versus five, and they still three people was on him when he got sacked. Yeah. So is that an EB thing or if that's a we don't care thing? That's not an EB thing. That's the talent oh. isn't there. Yeah. I did not expect us to be world beaters this year. But I don't expect us to lose to a winless team like the Bears. I don't expect us to lose to a one and five team like the Giants, who came in with five sacks or so on the entire year and left the game with five or six more. I don't expect that type of stuff. It's and the to the backup. So you want to go there? We might as well just go there. What the who's the backup? I ain't finished with commanders yet. We about to segue. All right. And this will be my pardon thing. So what is the solution, Sabrina? It's, it's certain things you have to we, – we've been saying, offensive line. Don't tell me what you're going to draft besides offensive line and linebackers. To me, the offensive line and linebackers. Number two, get Ron out of here. I wish him well as a person. He's got to go. He's got to go. Everything else can be tweaked. But that so offensive line – The media future, not, not in February. You know, what can we do now? Okay. I, I don't know what we can do now because – even if you get rid of Ron now, the line is still what it is. It's I'm not still, talking about Ron because that's just going to be – that'll happen in February. That's going to happen today. It's some little things you can do. You can uh, see if you can acquire somebody with some experience. Give up one or two. Sabrina, there are available – got to be somebody better than – a lot more people better than what we have, Sabrina. I can get out there and do it better. I can clip somebody, get a file, get a new something. How would know she's trying to protect you? Get right. So they just give it up on the line. They don't even yeah. talk. Yeah, there's, I, you know what, to me, and that's a hard thing. If my job is to protect somebody, I would, and I'm sure they do feel bad. I would feel so no, bad. I, I would feel terrible if I see that person getting pummeled and clobbered. I would, I would feel terrible. He's the most forty. He's been sacked forty times so far this season. That's not sustainable. They're going to get that man hurt, just like R.G. Well, R.G. was partly because he wouldn't get out of bounds. He was doing stupid stuff, he, part of it. He already had his his career was shortened for injuries. They don't want that to happen to Howell, because I actually like to do. I do. He's learning. He's growing. I like him. They're going to hurt that man, calling them plays like they're calling them, and, and, and not blocking for him properly. They're going to get him hurt. But, Sabrina, let's speak on this. Did you see your boy go in on them with the F-bombs and the D bombs and the MF bombs and the S bombs. He let them have. Got to be better. Anything they did that surprised you guys early on? No, I want to say so. I think it's just a lack of focus on our part, a lack of attention to detail, not starting fast, and creating holes that are too big for us to overcome in the second half. Does it get frustrating when that? Yes, theme it does. I'm fucking tired of this. I'm tired of this. It's been seven fucking years of the same. I'm tired of this. What can you do now going forward to get it turned around? get our minds right and get ready to play Philadelphia. <laughs> he now, said, if that don't get it popping, but he meant that thing. He's seven years he's been a loser. Seven years. And they and I'm astonished of how they have kept all four now. Because they are all pro bowlers in their own right. And they work well together. But how hard or how long can you prevent the opposing team from scoring if you're tired. And if they do three and outs and they don't convert these third downs, the defense is going to get tired. And, and you brought up a good point. You said we kept all four of them talking about Payne and Allen and Chase and Sweat. So we got contracts for two of them. This year is a contract year for Sweat and for and Chase. Payne. So my father, and, get it. Yeah, and my father and I had a conversation earlier, who would you keep? And he astonished me because I thought we would be on the same page. He said between the two, if he had to pick, he would keep Chase over Sweat. And I was like, no. Chase was supposed to be the franchise face because he was so phenomenal in his rookie year. But I've been saying this from the beginning. 
His numbers were so explosive this first year because sweat was pushing them his way and making it easy. But once they figured out, they figured out that one turn move that he had, uh -huh. he, then he got hurt. So it's just in sweat's favor. Plus, I just like sweat a lot more. <laughs> It's easy on the eyes, but you know, so uh, part not part. But yeah, I just think if I had to choose between the two, I would definitely keep sweat. Yeah, and of course, uh, in a perfect world, we want both of them to stay. We like Chase, you know what I'm saying? But if we have to choose, then we both pick for sweat. It's, yeah. Mm -hmm. So let's just segue into this one. So the next game, we got to play the division leaders, the Eagles. And these, this, now carbon copy. Copy this game plan. Them Bamas done went out and acquired Kevin Bayer, two-time pro bowler at the safety position, and they got Julio. Just before they play us, mind you. Or now, what kind of, that's what I say, the commanders, God don't like commands too, they do some more stuff, because it's just perfect timing for us to lose. They are acquiring, and they're making a move to go to improve every year. Yep. So in their mind, we made it through the shit last year. Now we just got to overcome. And when they go down, so the reason why they acquired Kelvin and gave up two 2024 draft selections for him is because they're weak in the safety position. We weak already. Why can't we go make some trades and acquire people for the OL? That's what I'm saying, Sabrina. Because we're too busy signing long snappers and shuffling around people on the offensive line that can't play to begin with. If I hear Char uh, Charles Leno's name called one more time, number 72, I didn't even know that man's number. I know it now because they call him every game for just the most basic peewee stuff that he should know. False they stops and all this crap. And then Holding. man, and then Cheeseman got called from five Chessman and Cheeseman, whatever his name is. They wasted that pick on him. It's just anyway, the Eagles acquired um Kevin, a safety, and Julio. It's about a ride. Because now you got AJ Brown and then you got Julio to contend with. Julio Jones, for those who don't know. You mm -hmm. know, phenomenal. Um my oh my god, I can't even speak. it. I'm getting sick just thinking about it. This is a redo, a reset. I promise I'm not going to let my pressure go up on no more of these games. Yeah, I was talking I'm to my father morning. this morning. He was like, I'm so tired of wasting part of my Sunday on this crap. I said, oh, he said crap. He he, he upset. Yeah, because it's hard to come back and hold your head up when you're dealing with this type of thing week in, week out. But, you know, it is commencing. Hopefully this will be out of there. But one thing for certain, two things for sure. Magic Johnson, the mm. state. The other state. Mm -hmm. So now it's getting real. You know what I'm saying? So watch this. Because what I know, what I've read, what mm -hmm. I've, I followed this dude. He was my first love in basketball. When he was was he? Kid. I never knew that. I started watching because of him. But it's one thing I know, two things for certain. Something's going to be done. Some heads about to roll. It's going to be some, some stepping up, some sitting down. I'm quite sure he's a phenomenal young man. I just wish he was on somebody else's team. I ain't mad at Sam Howell. I like him. I think he can grow to be a franchise quarterback. I do. He needs help. He needs help and he needs continued play. He needs some more training. They need to rest up now. He had that last season. He, he, wasn't, ready. he wasn't ready. He ready. He's, 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 he's he no rookie. I've seen rookie. We've seen rookie football players before Sabrina. They're a little bit more productive than him. He needed to sit on the bench a little longer. Putting him out there this fast was, was not helpful to his growth. So that's all I'm saying, Sabrina. Now he getting stopped like it's free. You know what I'm saying? Like they get, you know, free stuff for getting at him. It's just crazy. I don't I, think I, I, I feel like his development has been hampered by yeah. the most atrocious offensive line in the league. He can't develop as fast if he doesn't have time to throw. He has yeah. a maximum. He got too much time to throw, and that's part of his problem. He needs to be more confident with himself and throw the ball away. Stop holding yeah. that ball. Yeah, I maybe that too. Why yeah. Like, why he ain't throw it over there? Throw it over there. Mm -hmm. You know, he's indecisive. He's not sure. Mm -hmm. You can't add that on top of, and they coming at you full thing. So we done talked about the commanders. We done mentioned them Eagles, which, oh gosh, that's terrible. 
Let, let's go. Look, we're gonna keep it in the NFC East. We just already there. You wanna go to the Cowboys or or or, or, or you wanna go to the Giants next? I think it Dakota Rain is at the end. I'm sorry. If they keep Dak after this year, then Jerry Jones needs to be admitted because he's starting to go down <laughs> dementia. <laughs> It, they need to start looking beyond. I'm sure they are quietly looking. Okay. I, you know, I don't know. Ooh. I think it depends on how the rest of the season goes. I think if he, I think if he gets them to the playoffs and they win a game, at least a game, they'll keep him. If they don't, That's they're going to get rid of him. Right now. You don't That's think not so? happening. Yeah. Because even the, the top six in the NFC, even if they make it in on seven, they're not going to win against nobody. I don't think so either. Yeah, it's and so it's not. So, and I uh, personally, like you said, maybe he's a great guy. I could care that. But my whole thing is this: whenever I'm looking, I always have to refer back to that contract that I didn't think he deserved. I think Jerry Jones was pressured into giving him something because he had franchise tagged him so many times. Yeah, I agree. I was asking him. It would have been, I would have said, Zach, you got to give me one more year to show me because it would have been evident the following year. These right. huge, large contracts just don't work in their favor sometimes. Mm -hmm. Like some people perform well because it's just in it, it's just a beast mode built. Like my homeboy, and um, I like Josh. Josh is the one. Lamar, it was, oh, I was very pleased. Yeah, I like Lamar. I can't not like Lamar. I can't not, not like them. Like Trent had that the biggest of the largest of all times on the OL side. Like some people get it and they flourish and they continue their level of play. But most mm -hmm. get those contracts and it's downhill in the minute they get them. So mm -hmm. um, so I say this is just his last year. They're not making the play. If they make the playoffs agreement, they're not gonna win no game. I think the code around, I think it done rain on his parade. I think it's time to end it and shut it down, or maybe go somewhere else as a backup because he's yeah, still some probably, somebody else can use him. Yeah, somebody else will sign him as a starter. I bet. Do you think somebody would. For the Steelers? Say it again. You think he can start for the Steelers? I could see that. I think Tomlin like that. Mm -hmm. you know, I've heard him speak in you know conversation, and I think that he'd be a great fit for um the Steelers. Probably better than what they have now. I don't want to see him in nothing burgundy and gold because of his. Oh, God, don't know, sir. But man. isn't that the type of thing we normally do? We need to shoot ourselves in the foot. Well, that was what under Snyder. He gone. Okay, we'll gone. see. It's a little bit residual some um, stupidity running around. <laughs> And let's finish out the NFC East with Tip and Tyron Taylor. Oh, Do you gosh. see it's better than Daniel Jones? Because he okay. has one game, even though he's playing us. And our defense is not, you know, we have him 14 points. So, but he was more productive in the win against us than D Jones done been all year. So I think this, I think that right now, yes, he's playing better than Daniel Jones. I think overall, I don't, I don't sure what, I'm not sure what happened, but something happened with Daniel Jones where he's not playing the way that he would normally play. Something's going on. Yeah. I think that Daniel is, huh? It's his neck. Right. And I, I think that Daniel is a better quarterback overall. He's got great legs. He's got a great arm. So I don't think he's a bad quarterback. I think he is their quarterback. I just don't know what's going on. Like you said, maybe it's just his neck. I don't know. But you can always be second because he was in that in that group with them, the um the man and brothers. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. He comes from that kind of coaching and stuff. So certain certain fundamentals are just great, sound fundamentals. He had like as a football player. The Giants were so correct when picking him over mm -hmm. half, even though that was the story of the year. And I do agree with you. Maybe the injury is causing him to not play as well, or mm -hmm. maybe they want because sometimes players are so desperate to play or to prove their worth because they gave him that huge contract that he may have not been disclosing how much pain he was in or what happened. Now that they know TT is capable of giving them W's, I would let Jones get healthy before I bring him back in. I agree because it's not like they have a whole lot of the good going on anyway. Let Jones get healthy. <laughs> let Tyra hold down the ship. It's not like they're playing for the championship. They're not. Dang. So just let, let Jones get better for sure. Yeah.
I'm looking forward to the future of the commanders and organization. I'm looking forward to see what Josh Harris is going to do. I like the fact that Magic is being vocal. I like the fact that I think we definitely going to get a new head coach next year. But this is the thing, Sabrina. He be the assistant head coach. Do they promote him to the AC position? If they don't, that's not – let me go back. If they do promote him, that's normally the way that they do things. You know what I'm saying? If you have a very talented, you know, someone within that's a step below, you usually just promote him up. So I think that they should. If they don't, I, I would be surprised. I would. Okay. I would. Let's see, bro. It's a little caveat to end all of this this week of football. I was watching a show where Aunt Shannon kind of went in on – Colorado Buffaloes in this season so far. Mm -hmm. So we all know Deion is dead. Two of his sons play Shador. Shador, his son is the quarterback. And I kind of went at them and said, basically, they losing games. They should win. And they have, they're have they getting the hype ahead of the ability to play. Like, mm -hmm. they're not concentrating. They're not following instructions. They're not doing the mm -hmm. things that he knows Dion is teaching now. And I have to, this is where I can give a little bit of grace because of the maturity, the age, and also they knew to this. They just getting started. Yeah. Shador can't carry the team by himself, you know. And um he's he also gonna have to acquire some pieces that he needs. He has one stand out on wide receiver, his son. They have to get used to good press as well as bad press. I do think the media attention is getting to them. I it's think so as well. Yeah. With followers and being online and all this other stuff. But I also must say this. If you're on the schedule to play the Colorado Buffaloes, I, you need to get it going because even in the last game they played, the standouts on the other team, they were noticed because these were great players that normally don't get a lot of press. I mean, you know, like prime time viewer, viewership mm -hmm. they call, and they was like look at this guy look at this guy he'd be great in NFL da, da, da. so again we need to have a little bit more patience with the Buffaloes they won three times as many games as they won last year and they need to really get into the playbooks and start studying it's over now the hype and the media and all the fun is over now it's time to play because yeah. I promise you you ain't gonna get me to buy no $500 tickets it, it, ain't it, no way in the world what I wouldn't even buy. I wouldn't even buy a one hundred dollar ticket for a college football game unless it's somebody that I know or unless they're doing very well. Correct. Yeah. So I wish Shannon. I think it's time for them to concentrate a little harder. But like Dion said, they're up and coming. So before we get to our picks, real quick, we're going to take like a two or three minute, a real quick diversion to a current event, a current topic. I don't know how many of you heard. I'm sure the whole world has heard it by now. The woman who was asked out by a man, the man, I mean, she was asked out by a man. She said, yes. And then um, he said, okay, I'm going to take you out. So he picked her up. She was dressed up. And then when they arrived, he said, okay, we're here at the Cheesecake Factory. And her face cracked. And she said, I'm not getting out this car. Why would a woman like me go into a Cheesecake Factory? That is a chain restaurant. I would die in there. That's she said, I'm a, I would die. It's so embarrassing. So my question is, should a woman expect a man to just take her wherever she wants to go? And is a Cheesecake Factory an acceptable date for any woman to go on, on a first date or any date? Was she entitled to say that? She's entitled to feel whatever way she wants to feel about herself because her work is, is, is her work. But let me, for, for all the regular sisters, <laughs> let me just, <laughs> first of all, Whoever asks pays, that's my thing. And I don't always expect for the first day. I would rather, my rule for first dates is we don't do restaurants. We do coffee or tea and we have conversation and we converse. We get to know one another. And we don't ask, what's your favorite color? What's your favorite meal? And da, da, da. We get to those hard questions. Because before I invest any amount of my time, because my time is very valuable. Mm -hmm. between my ministries and doing the football thing and my family, you know what I'm saying? So before I invest any extra time in you, I need to know, are we at least compatible on that foundational things? Mm -hmm. And those those come out through conversation. Now, of course, everybody has the manuscript, the manuscript to say the things they're supposed to say, but mm -hmm. you still hear them up front. So to get to the question, she wasn't wrong for feeling that she's worth more than that, but she was dead wrong in projecting it on that guy. Plus, 
that ride had a double window. Moo, I looked at it. He what do you mean a double window? The moon roof here, the, the whole roof glass. That's that's not a kill. You know what I'm saying? So, and how does she know what it could have grown into? You just don't throw nobody away. And plus, is a man obligated? I'm under the belief that you a man is not obligated to spend a thousand dollars on the first date. It was five hundred dollars, even a hundred dollars. Mm -hmm. Go ahead. I'm sorry. Please. You, you, I do believe respect is due and common courtesy and decency. But you can't. If he takes you to uh, a non-franchise restaurant, great. You got further than I probably would, you know, expect. To be. But no, she, no, she can't. You can't do that. You don't know what value this man has. You just can't look at what he's taking you and think this all I get. No. And maybe he's the type that start off slow. I don't agree with spending a whole bunch of money on anybody on a first date when there's not a relationship. You're not doing anything if you're courting or if you're going out on a date. Yeah. And, and oh, and that was the word she, she said, we're courting. She said, we're courting. And so when we're courting, I should be able to get anything that I want. So no. now Courting is getting to know a person, know the person, whether you're compatible. Courting isn't just a free ride to go wherever you want to go. I think but she wasn't interested in him to begin with. No. Nope. I feel like for me. She went out with him to get a free, expensive meal. Yep. And I, I feel you go there and you get out. You say, but this is bring there did something too you have to be careful of. You know, sometimes when men put out that amount of money, they want you to put out. Exactly. And, and, you know, and you, the two don't go together, but do you expect less because you expected to put out? No, but I wouldn't call the cheesecake factory less. And let me just drop this tidbit for everybody. Do you know I have never been to the cheesecake factory? She told me that a couple of weeks ago, she had never, because we were going for my husband's birthday or something. And she said, I've never been. And I'm like, what? Never been so that first day match that if that was my first day I would have felt special or felt like God was doing something because He took me somewhere I've never been. Now I've been to high end roof Chris. I we went to um um Hell's Kitchen. Like Sabrina and I went. We do go. I do go out. It's just I've never been to the, the Cheesecake Factory. So. I would have thought God was doing something. So somebody else's trash can be somebody, someone else's trash. You have to find a person that fit within your lane. So they don't fit. They don't. And fit. I also think that, for me, my opinion is that I would not want no dude to take me out to no expensive restaurants. To at the beginning, I feel like let's be regular. Let's get to know each other, and then when we have earned the right with one another to be. Um, uh, uh, extravagant with one another, then we can spoil one another that way. Yeah, yeah. you set to the expectation that because if you take her to a non chain, then where's she gonna go on the moon for, for brunch? You know, leave, let it build, let it escalate, like, do some excitement, get to know the man, right? You know what I'm saying, and you can't really do all that smack and eating the food in your teeth and all that. So, ladies, let's try this, let's do our first day conversing over coffee, tea, getting mm -hmm. to see. Is he on time? Does he know everybody that I want to? I went out on a date, and every woman that came in the door, this guy sitting across from me was saying hi to her by first name. I was like, red flag, blue flag, orange flag, <laughs> all the flags, because I was like, not that it's something wrong with him being popular, no, but nobody's that popular. <laughs> That's all I'm gonna say. And we were, and I picked the area, so it wasn't like he lived there or he was familiar with the area, so. Yeah, I I think she it was uh, that dude got lucky got a gift from God by her asking like that because he he saved himself a lot of heartache because maybe her expectations were too high and he seemed to be a pretty normal decent guy. So mm -hmm. last thing I say, the number I was doing single class and the number one reason for failed marriages is not infidelity and it's not money. It's unexpressed expectations. Yes, so maybe. She should have told him what her expectations when he offered to take her out. Maybe that's the time to say, Well, you know, I, I don't do chain restaurants, so right. they have to, you know, and that way he would have before he even went there, it wouldn't have been all of that. You, if you're going to have standards like that, that you believe are hard stops or standards, mm -hmm. and it was so much of a standard of yours that you didn't get out to call, but did you see her face when he said the date is over? She wasn't expecting that, she was expecting to get her way when he took her. Baby, yes. Oh, 
She yeah. got it then. You know what I'm saying? Yeah. So maybe she should have expressed her expectations. That's what I do. And that way it won't be those off of me. Yeah, Sabrina, drum roll, please. It's been a while, so you already got the scores. We haven't recorded in two weeks, so you got the scores from the previous week. Sabrina is leading, but hopefully I can make some ground this week because these are pretty good games. Yeah. <laughs> I'm going to start it off with the Thursday night game, the Bucks and the Bills. Okay. Um, the, bu the, the Buccaneers. The Bills lost surprisingly to the Patriots yesterday. Um, that's, it, that's another divisional game. You can't call them. You they play each other enough to know. They got scouts for the scouts with them games. So nobody expected the way they manhandled us and a couple of other people. You don't expect the Bills to go down to the Patriots. And you see your boy Belichick got another multi-year contract. So even without Brady, they still willing to pay him because they recognized it was a perfect combination between them two. I think it was 70-30, 70, 70 Brady, 30 Belichick. But, you know, mm -hmm. it just amazed me how he can pay those dudes next to nothing. And they will go and play their hearts out for him. So, yeah, those divisional games. This is not a divisional game. Who you going with, Sabrina? Yeah, I'm saying I don't think the Bills are going to lose at home after the way they just lost to the Patriots. I think they're going to bounce back. They may, yeah, I got them winning this one too. So I'm going to go again because I was interested in this game because who gets home field advantage when the Jets play the Giants? Right. <laughs> so this, is, this, is this like a Giants home game? So this is charged as a home game for the Giants. Correct, yes. Okay, mm -hmm. so who you got in this game since they, they, um, uh, I can't I know. Let's that. not go back. <laughs> I don't know who to pick for um, this one. Um, I'm that would be crazy. I feel like since Tyrod is in, they have a chance. I'm gonna, I'm gonna pick the Jets, but I'm tempted though. I usually go with my gut, even that's when just, I'm the Jets run their defense with that run. I'm not sure because. You know, they did stop a couple of people already this year that I thought when they were going to lose and they won. Gwen decided, you're just talking. Um, this is my first game I'm going to go against Beanie. You're picking the Giants. Oh, I'm almost, I'm tempted to go with you. I'm, you can come back to it. I'm, I'm going to pick the Giants. You are? Yeah. Okay, yeah. All right, so I'm going to introduce the Jaguars at the Steelers. And this is very intriguing to me because I feel like both of them are contenders in the AFC. The Steelers, to me, not quite as much. But, ooh. Um, Whenever I'm ready to count out Tom, then he come back the next week and win and win hands. And yeah. I'm saying, I don't even recognize their quarterback. If someone say, if you get a million dollars, if you can tell me who their starting quarterback is, I might get 750 because I might know the first name. Not now, You know what I'm saying? So I feel like what is making them? He's still in line to have another winning season. So is he going to pull this out, Sabrina? I think he will, especially if they home. You picking? I got the Steelers at home. I'm going to pick the Jaguars. Okay. Yeah. Surprise me, you're going to get your Steelers. Go ahead. Mm. Okay, next, I'm scared to even introduce it, so you know what the next one game is. You might. <laughs> the Eagles at the Commanders. I. My heart is with the Commanders. My team is the Commanders. But I got to be realistic at this juncture. So, yeah. Okay. Is that so what you gonna do? I remember Shanae and Kilala. <laughs> Wait, sing it again. Sing it again. Oh, say Shanae is on you. So what you gonna do? Shanae came out. Arrest her. Arrest her. <laughs> oh gosh. I'm going to go. I want to say Commanders because we lose the games we're supposed to win and win the games we're supposed to lose. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. It, it would be smart of me to pick the Commanders, right? No, because this is the one time the rule is not in effect. Is when we play divisional games. Mm -hmm. We're not winning this game. So the Eagles. Eagles. All right, since we're going we're gonna to talk about it, let's just go to them girls. They okay. playing the Rams. And AT&T, what you going to do? Who you going with? 
Unfortunately, I think the Cowboys will win that. I'll get it, exactly. Yeah. Okay, give me another one. The Vikings and, and um the Packers. Okay. Lambo. Oh. It's so funny right now, as we're recording this, it's Monday night and the Vikings are playing the 49ers. Let me check real quick the score. So I just checked. And as I just checked, they're congratulating each other at the end of the game. The Vikings just beat the 49ers. It's rigged. It's rigged. Okay. Okay. It's rigged. Rig. No way. <laughs> they put two touchdowns together. And you come out and beat the AFC contenders, the I'm sorry, the NFC contenders mm -hmm. for the oh yep. Yeah, Monday through Sunday. So well, that's your game. Your words are any given Sunday. You know that's what you'd be telling us. You right know? now, come on. Yeah, nobody would have picked that. What are you doing? He was irrelevant today. Oh, he was Mr. Irrelevant today. Cousins Kirk got out no on him. Show did. And with that being said, I said that to say you said the Vikings and the Packers. I'm picking the Vikings. How about that? Yeah, they feeling that stuff. Now they're going to win this next one too. All right. And it's the Packers. So they, yeah. they'll beat the Packers. Okay. I'm going to say the next one should be the Patriots who just beat who? They just beat the Bills against the Dolphins. So the Patriots at the Dolphins in yeah. Miami. Dolphins got that game. Yeah, I do. Yeah, they no. And the Dolphins just lost to ain't no way in the world. Mm -mm. So next we're gonna go to the Browns traveling to Seattle to play the Seahawks. So it's Geno versus Deshaun, but Deshaun got hurt. So I'm going with Geno. Same. <laughs> okay. Okay. So let me finish off my game because I I I'm an undercover Lamar lover. <laughs> The, uh, the the Ravens going to um Arizona to play the Cardinals. Why are we even discussing this? I know, but you just got to put my boy out there. It could be a problem. Worse, um, stranger things have happened. As we just saw with the Vikings and the 49. Hey, Sabrina! Yes. The on, come on down. Nobody would have called that. Nobody. I'm watching <laughs> the, the, the post-game stuff. They were just interviewing Kirk. Okay, two more, y'all. We're going to do the Bengals at the 49ers, who just surprisingly lost, and it's in San Francisco. They're not losing them. Go with fast running. Yeah. Uh-huh. So 49ers? Yes. The Burroughs may not be as, as off as he was because he should be healing by now. It's six weeks now. Come on now. Yes. With that injury was turf toe, whatever it is. But that turf toe ain't no joke. Did you see Dion's feet? Oh, their feet and their fingers, too, just be, oof. Interesting. Doing no undercover snuggling with me. <laughs> Listen, I, I, I had something to say on that. I'm going to keep that quiet. Let me be quiet. Let no, me be I, quiet. I, I, I pretty key. I'm going to be honest. But man, uh-uh. Nope. That might be contagious. I don't know what it is. I, I, listen, all I'm going to say is this. <laughs> I'm going to keep I'll say this. If they treat you well, you will take them toes, okay? That's what I'll say. I'll say that. And the final game, what was that? See what I'm saying? I just want to have a good laugh because I haven't laughed today. No, I was trying to keep it positive. You ain't, it ain't even funny no more because you said that because you're right. And that's where I'm not <laughs> fucking from. But you're right. I would take the little right. But you can help them out. We can know the basics. I cut the toes. Yeah. Ripping up my good cheek. <laughs> I have a you know, man, we got the little crusty plate with that feet Listen, well, I, okay, y'all, we getting off the rails, but I gotta go there. One day, I want to get out the bed, and I said, "Man, what is these little white flickers in the covers?" Because we had on dark sheets on the bed. It was like black sheets. I said, "What's this white stuff?" So he say. It's from the, our feet. I said, oh, no, this ain't going to work. We got to do something about this. Oh, my goodness. Ooh. Ooh. And the last, when you see the little indentation in the sneaker, you done paid 300 off those sneakers, and it got the little knot on the side. Oh, wait, I ain't never seen no indentation. <laughs> Talking about something else. I <laughs> like that. On the side? On the side. Okay, I think I have seen that somebody. Yeah, I've seen that before. 
I I got my laugh out for the day. So bring you got flakes. All you missed was the sugar and the milk. <laughs> <laughs> so what is this white stuff? <laughs> 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 We're supposed to be getting back on track. <clears throat> the Chiefs at the Broncos. <laughs> This a joke, right? It's <laughs> a joke too, right? Oh, you could take you on with the laughter. That's it. No, no, no. The Chiefs get on my nerves sometimes because the teams I think they're supposed to pummel and make like um monkey stomp and mm -hmm. gorilla stomp. They don't. Mm -hmm. I'm thoroughly impressed with my homes. I know how. I don't like the theatrics and I don't like the favoritism that they show him. Mm -hmm. But he is. He does do the job. He does. So I got the Chiefs. Have a great week of football. Next couple of weeks for Commander fans, it's going to be hard. We're playing a lot of contenders. Mm. And let's leave on this note for one of my favorite DLs in the NFL. Roll it, Bainey. <laughs> Got to be better. Anything they did that surprised you guys early on? No, I want to say so. I think it's just a lack of focus on our part, a lack of attention to detail, not starting fast, and creating holes that are too big for us to overcome in the second half. Does it get frustrating when that thing Yes, it does. I'm f***ing tired of this Tired of this bull it's been seven years of the same shit. tired of this shit. what can you do now going forward to get it turned around get our minds right and get ready to play philadelphia